There are so many people at the temple today. How am I ever going to figure out who's best to talk to? I wonder how Stan's doing with his interviews. I sure hope he's taking this seriously. He's such a goofball sometimes. I hope he's not somewhere in Galilee embarrassing himself and me. Oh, okay, Sylvia, get a grip. Stop talking to yourself and start talking to someone else. But who? Oh, he looks official. I'll bet he has plenty to say about the Messiah. Uh, excuse me, sir, sir. Uh, may I help you? I, I hope so. You see, my name is Sylvia Silverman, and mm. I'm working on a documentary film about the Messiah. Oh, wonderful. What can I do to help? Well, I'm interviewing a variety of people to get material, material for the film. Mm. Do you work in the temple? Oh, I do. I'm, I'm one of the priests. A chief priest? Not yet. But you have ambitions. Well, doesn't everyone? I wasn't sure how it worked for those with your uh, higher calling. Is there a corporate ladder at the temple? I thought you might be satisfied, you know, just serving God. No, don't get me wrong. I, I, I get fulfillment out of the, the, the smallest of tasks. But you wouldn't mind getting some recognition or a promotion. Oh, well, you're not here to talk about me. Incidentally, is your film going to be shown locally? Well, hopefully. It'll have national and perhaps even international recognition. Oh, my international recognition. I would be delighted to tell you anything you want to know about the Messiah from the biblical perspective. Fantastic. Thank you, Rabbi. So, Josiah. J-O-S-I-A-H. <laughs> now, where would you like me to sit? The lighting best is over here, and, and tell me the truth. This is my best side. Oh. <laughs> I think both sides are equally nice. Oh, why don't you just sit down over there? Oh. So, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, would any of the uh, chief priests be available to uh, join our conversation? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. I'm next in line to be chief priest anyway, and... Lucky for you, I am the one who knows the most about the Messiah. Of course. I didn't mean to question your worthiness. I hope I didn't offend you. Oh, no, not at all. I am your humble servant. Well, so please, tell me what the Bible says about the Messiah. Well, interestingly, the word Messiah isn't even used in Torah. And it was a much later development long after the Exodus, and even after we settled in the Promised Land. Well, what does Messiah mean, exactly? It means anointed one. But there have been other anointed ones throughout Israel's history. Isn't that true? Oh, yes, indeed. When the Lord chose a new king or prophet, the, the, the chosen person would be anointed with oil. Those kings and prophets were sent to help us. But, as you may know, throughout the centuries, my people have still endured many struggles. Well, many of their own making. Well, yes, that's true. <clears throat> Our people are no strangers to sin. And at any rate, though, those years of turmoil, there arose the hope that someday God would send a new king who would be able to fix the problems that no other king was able to fix. Well, what sort of things would the Messiah fix? Oh, well, the Messiah would, would return the Holy Land to us so the people of Israel would again rule over this land rather than a foreign government. I see. Our Jewish leaders would rule again, and, and Jewish law would again be the law of the land. So if the Messiah comes and restores biblical Jewish law as the only law in Israel, mm -hmm. wouldn't priests like yourself have much more power than you have now? What do you mean? Well, I mean, right now you're under Roman laws, mm -hmm. so the Romans have power over you. But if you're ruled by Jewish law alone, the people would need Jewish priests to interpret the law for them, wouldn't they? That's true. And as interpreters of Jewish law, priests like yourself would hold a great deal more power. Well, yes, I suppose so. So, when the Messiah comes, he will bring you that promotion you've been hoping for. 
Is that why you're so eager for the Messiah to come? Yes. No, wait. No, 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 no. I did not mean to say that. You didn't mean that you want the Messiah to come so you can finally be a chief priest, or you didn't mean to say it in front of a filmmaker. My, 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 look at the time. I have to be on my way. Um, perhaps you would like to interview uh, one of our temple visitors so you could get a lay perspective, like this woman here. <laughs> Excuse me. Wait. Excuse me? Hmm? Would you like to come over here for a moment? This is the well-known documentarian Sylvia Silverman. She's doing research about the Messiah. Do you have anything to say about the Messiah? How funny that you should ask. The Messiah is the reason I'm here today. Oh, really? Yeah. But what oh. do you mean? I came to the temple today to give an offering for Thanksgiving for the life of my brother. Oh, how lovely. You see, my brother died recently, but Jesus the Messiah raised him from the dead. We have him back again. Lazarus is alive. I am sorry. Um, I must have chosen unwisely. This woman is clearly demented, and um, I will just find a less crazy worshiper for you to interview. I am not demented or crazy. If it's all the same to you, Rabbi, I want to talk to this woman. Well, it's not all the same to me, and I will not have the good reputation of the Messiah sullied by this lunatic. I am not a lunatic. Oh. I'm Martha, by the way. Mm. What happened in Bethany several uh. days ago was truly a miracle. Mm. Even you uh. must have heard about it, Rabbi. I heard rumors. Well, what happened in Bethany? <sighs> well, you see, my brother Lazarus had been very, very ill, and we sent for Jesus to come to heal him, of course. Of course. But he didn't get there in time. <sighs> In fact, he didn't get to Bethany till Lazarus had been dead for four days. Four days? Where was he? Mars? <laughs> but Jesus took us to my brother's tomb. He insisted that we open the tomb, so we did. Oh, have you never heard of the purity laws? Jesus called for Lazarus to come out, and he did. Oh. He was still all wrapped up in his grave clothes, but he came out. He was alive. That's remarkable. Well, it's not remarkable. It's ridiculous. The dead coming back to life. There are hundreds of witnesses. Rabbi, you already had your chance to speak. Now, please, allow Martha to finish her story. I thought you had to be on your way. Now, I am a defender of the Jewish faith, a protector of our tradition, and I must stay and protect the good reputation of the Messiah. Martha deserves the chance to share why she thinks Jesus is the Messiah. If you stay, you must be respectful of her. Fine. You might even learn something. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that you were a comedian, Sylvia. <laughs> We've all got a lot to learn, even you, Rabbi. Now, Martha, you say that other people witnessed your brother being raised from the dead. Yes, many people. And even more people have seen Lazarus since Jesus raised him. With that many witnesses, even the rabbi can't question the truth of this miracle. How about that, rabbi? Do you question the validity of this miracle? I question many things. Do you question that God can do anything? No. We see throughout scripture that the Lord is omnipotent and capable of doing great wonders. Do you question that certain people have the powers to heal and do miracles? No. I have seen people with such powers. Then why do you question this miracle? I question whether or not our Lord is the one who gave this man the ability to do these miracles. What do you mean? Well, there are other powers at work in our world. I've seen no proof that Jesus' power comes from the Lord. Have you met Jesus? Mm. He's a rabbi, just like yourself. Uh -oh. He knows the scriptures better than anyone I have ever met. I have, oh, you've only just met me, madam. I would ask you to withhold judgment. Well, I'm sure you're trained in the law, mm. Rabbi, but so is Jesus. He's a great preacher, and he's faithful to our scriptures and our traditions. Oh, that, that is where I disagree. Jesus has blatantly disregarded parts of our tradition, which no good rabbi would do. Can you give us examples? Oh, I can give you many examples. He, he, he eats with sinners. He consorts with Gentiles. 
He has repeatedly broken Sabbath law and has allowed his disciples to do the same. Only in special circumstances. Jesus thinks we've forgotten what God created the Sabbath for. That's the problem. That Jesus should tell you what he thinks about the law instead of what the law actually says. Certainly, you realize that laws require some interpretation, don't you, Rabbi? Of course. But who gave this Jesus the right to interpret a law given to Moses himself? Maybe God did. You seriously believe that this Jesus is the Messiah sent from God? I know he is. Well, he's not even a king. But he is descended from David's line. Oh, and so is the janitor, but that's, he's no messiah. <laughs> Has Jesus been building an army? Oh, certainly not. He preaches peace and forgiveness. Ah, oh, well, then he's not the messiah. Is he planning to overthrow the government? Of course not. Not the messiah. You see, madam, those are the sorts of things the messiah will be sent here to do. Jesus may be a, a miracle worker, a, a flashy showman. He may be popular with the crowds, but nothing Jesus has done adds up to him being the Messiah. Just maybe your ideas about the Messiah are too small. I know Jesus is the Messiah, sent from God. Maybe God decided to send a different sort of Messiah. Or... Maybe Jesus is just another in a long line of false messiahs here to draw our attention away from the real messiah we should be waiting for. Do you really believe that's true? I believe that Jesus has been a distraction for our people. I believe that he has caused many to stray from the traditions of our faith. I believe that if Jesus is left unchecked, he could be a danger to our people. What? How can you say that? Jesus is a danger to no one. Our Roman rulers are always on the hunt for rebels who threaten their power. The moment they catch wind of any possible conspirators to threaten their rule, they will impose greater and stronger restrictions on our people. Jesus is no threat. He's not looking for power. Oh, but he's got charisma. And he's gained a following. At the temple, we're concerned that he could inspire his followers to rebel against Rome. But isn't that what you just said the real Messiah will do? Wait. I know what your real concern is. You're worried that if people listen to Jesus, they will no longer listen to you, and you will lose your power. Oh, that's ridiculous. Is it? If people realize that Jesus holds a greater truth than you do, if they realize that Jesus is sent from God, they won't need you. They'll listen to Jesus instead of to you, <clears throat> chief priests. Incidentally, he's not a chief priest yet. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think you priests are afraid of Jesus because he threatens everything you hold dear. All of the traditions, the offerings, the power. Even if you knew he was the Messiah, you wouldn't follow him because he threatens your precious comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But I know Jesus. I know he brings life and hope and grace. He's everything this world needs, whether we believe it or not. He saved my brother, and I do believe he will save the world. Rabbi, what do you have to say about what Martha just said? I have allowed Martha to say what she needed to say and I have been respectful, as I promised. But I don't feel I need to dignify her accusations with a response, and I've got a meeting with the chief priests and some other leaders of the temple, so I really must be going. Well, thank you for your time and expertise, Rabbi. And thank you, Martha, for sharing your story and your thoughts. It's clear that Jesus has made quite an impact on your life. He has. I wish everyone could know how wonderful he is. Will you be speaking to more people about Jesus? Yes, I hope so. My brother and I are trying to get a diverse sampling of opinions and experiences from people. In that case, I know an interesting group of people for you to talk to next. 
it'll be a very different conversation from the one we just had. They're not your typical followers of Jesus. They're shorter. Shorter? What does that mean? I'll just let, that, let you figure that one out for yourself. I know you'll enjoy them, and you'll find them in the city square. Well, they sound interesting. Uh, maybe I'll interview them next, after my brother gets back. Well, good luck with your documentary, Sylvia. I hope you can help people see that Jesus really is God's promised Messiah. I really should get home to my brother now. Goodbye. Thank you. What a day. I certainly heard both sides of the argument today. I wonder what Stan's learned. I wonder what Martha meant about talking to shorter people. Maybe Jesus has a special appeal to the vertically challenged. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait to find out. <laughs>